Hey anyway, this is the Hawk. So Saturday, 71 year old Arnold Schwarzenegger in an Arnold uh, sports classic in Johannesburg somewhere was attacked by a teenager, kicked in his back. And the, uh, when the teenager was picked up, he was screaming, give me a Lamborghini, give me a Lamborghini. But if you watch the video, you'll see there's a gentleman behind him. He raises his hand and steps aside was a setup. That's what it appears. Arnold being the good guy that he is, he never pressed charges. Luckily for him, this kid did not have a knife or a gun. His security people failed him. They were too worried about the principal than worrying about the threat. A kid came too close to them and he is extremely lucky he didn't get a knife in his back in a very dangerous country like it is. Um, he's very lucky to be alive. People are blowing this off, but it's no joke. That kid came too close to him, was able to attack him, and if that kid had a knife, I don't think Arnold would have lived. People are not taking this seriously. They should. Okay, after watching that uh, little short video, I'm sorry about the sound. Um, you can see there was a security gap in that video, in, in that uh, situation where um, Arnold's very vulnerable and he's lucky to be alive. In our next segment, um, we have a bunch of. Uh, uh, university students from Florida who came to South Africa on a world tour uh, from foreign countries and um, were at a preschool and they arrived in a bus, got off the bus and a vehicle followed them in, six gentlemen and held them at gunpoint robbed them of their passports, all their stuff and they were extremely lucky to be alive. Um, anything that went wrong there, they could have been shot, raped, murdered right there. It, it's just unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. They took their passports, everything. And it sounds like there was a setup. Somebody knew they were coming there. They told them. These people were waiting for them. As they arrived, they followed them in through the gates to the school, got out, followed them into the school and robbed them blindly in front of everybody. It just shows you the examples of what's going on in South Africa. That's two lots of people from the United States in a week. And this is a great example for South Africa. And yet again, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa never said a thing. He didn't say sorry, he didn't say nothing. We have heard nothing. In, in this regard. Here's a picture of these students. In our next segment we've got Ace Makashua, uh, Deputy President, that was Deputy President, is now screaming um, how he it is time, they've had the election, it's time, time is up, they're coming to get it. 
So he is spewing his rhetoric about taking land again to the people to cover up what they're not going to do. And if they do, they are heading for a huge economical crisis. The next picture we will put up is the parliamentary seats and how you can see the ANC and co have, um, let me put this up quick, uh, 400 seats on how they spread out. The ANC um, has 249 seats, the DA 89, the EFF 25, the the, um, the uh, IVP 10, the Freedom From Plus 4, the ACDP 3, and the UDM 4. And so it goes. And then we have on the other side, uh, well, you can see from the picture how it's how it's laid out. And then we have a list of the ANC um, parliamentary seats that the ANC are going to put down as part of their um, ministers and where they are appointed. And Ramaphosa is trying to thin the herd. But one has to realize even Majuju there, a little Majuju boy uh, from the EFF is screaming that all these people want their piece of meat. And they're going to turn on Ramaphosa. Even the trade unions now who are part of this whole mess want their people in parliament. It just shows you everybody wants their pound of meat. You cannot, cannot play this game too long before your own people turn internally start attacking you. Ramaphosa is on thin ice. I can see this thing falling apart before the four years are up. People, it's time for change. And it's time to get rid of these parasites and these criminals that are just there for themselves. So be ready for the next four years. And fight this land reform with everything you have. Now, I'm going to put up some ministers, great ministers that are so corrupt that even I, my hair stands up just to think that they're going to put them back in Parliament again. So, just a minute while I get them up there for you, and you can see who they are. Well, let's start with... Uh our great minister, Bathalima Balamani, minister of women in the presidency. She was rocked with several scandals. Uh, as her term as a social development minister, she was, there were many calls for her to be fired. She failed to give out social grants till it was not, it was not, the time was up. And She's back on the list of people back in there again. And all I can think of is that she has blackmail on somebody. She's part of the, the situation here. So it's just a more corruption all the time. Just shift them around. She shouldn't be in there. She should have been removed. Too much power. Incompetence. She needs to go. He has a picture of her. He has another fine one. Faith Matambi, former Minister of Communications. During Zuma's term, she's uh, wanted to steal at all costs. Um, in the Government Communications Information Systems, the Commission of Inquiry of State Capture last September shed light on many other things. How 50 million rand was paid to the Gupta owned newspaper. New Age A and T A and A T and A, and it goes on and on and on. Unbelievable. She's heading to the National Assembly too. This just shows you the incompetence of this government. They keep putting corrupt people in power. 
and she smiles away and exit off. She's corrupt to the core, and yet she's going to government too. This needs to stop. You can read the captions on the video if you pause it. Here we go with Masuli Kababa. He made headlines with the Gupta family. Very bad. They call him the Gupta Stooge. He was singled out for many, many corrupt things during the uh, Home Affairs, former Home Affairs Minister. Um, there's even a video leaked of this guy having sex. And uh, he's back in power too. And it's a joke. He's number 23 on the list. Can you believe that? What is wrong with these people? All the other parties must reject these people, have them removed from power. They are a menace and a parasite. And here we go, Mambile Mokanyana, Minister of Environmental Affairs. He boiled in this Busasa corruption scandal and following with the commission inquiry and state capture. Former Busasa chief, operating officer for Anglo uh, Aguirres. Uh, she was receiving 50,000 rand a month from this country, company in cash. She still unbelievable good power in this thing. And the reason for that is, is because she was bribing everybody else too. They were all taking bribes. And yet she's back in power. And everybody will look the other way. She's an arrogant criminal and needs to be removed from government. These are parasites. In the end, these people will go to jail. Sooner or later, people will figure out that these people are no good. And all that money that they took could have gone towards building houses for the people. Well, there he goes Arnold. He left the facility and he's fine. He didn't seem to be perturbed by it. And the fact that this kid kicked him in the back. He stood his ground. He never went down. That's a sentiment to the man. He's a pretty strong guy. Uh, he's 71 years old, which is pretty good. Uh, in our next segment there, you'll see uh, Hawks have arrested... Well, moving in on 62 KZN councillors. And our friend, the mayor, Zandile Kumadi, she's fighting for her political life because she's so corrupt, it's a joke. Um, Zuma's friend, and you can read the article about 62 councillors that have been taking bribes, involved in all kinds of corruption. They need to go to jail, all of them. Doesn't matter who you are, you're going to jail. If you're a criminal, you're a criminal. Put your hand up, go to jail. And don't come out. And she's the prime suspect. All these people that are going into politics need to go. They're all corrupt. Listen. It, Corruption is a, is a human rights violation. You're violating your own people's rights by taking the money that should go to the people. You shouldn't be in power if you're so corrupt. The money is more important to you. Go get a job. Stop taking people's money. It doesn't belong to you. Because that people's money should go to the schools, go to the clinics, go to the roads, go to the maintenance, go to the railways, go to the airports, go to everything that should be doing and maintenance into the electrical system and all kinds of other things. If you can't do that, you shouldn't be in power. She's an absolute joke and needs to be removed. Congratulations to the IFP gaining more seats this time. Uh, Chief, Paramount Chief Mangasutu Butalezi. Uh, he stated in, in, in an interview that every single election since 1994 has been not free and fair. It's been corrupted by the ANC and it's just got worse and worse. So we shouldn't be surprised that the election was stolen by the ANC. He has always stated from the beginning that um, they 
have lied to us uh, constantly and and uh, every election has been corrupted having said that there's another picture here which shows you of ballot boxes still filled sealed never been counted this shows you they've been found all over the country and it just shows you the, the, the mentality of this government that's not doing their job, they don't care, they knew they were going to steal this election and therefore here we go. Listen, we understand that the majority of people in South Africa are black. We understand that the rest are white, Indian and colored. That's not the point. A lot of white people voted for black parties too. And Indians voted for parties too. This is not just about race, this is about good governance. And if your government is corrupt, there's no way the ANC got 57%. We all know that. Not after 24 years of going backwards, not forwards. And now they promise you they're going to do something better. Oh my God, what a joke. That's an absolute lie. And we all know that. Before we start on this next section, so let's talk about Mr. Ace again. He decided, uh, just thought, just to remind you of what he looks like. This is the another one of these very corrupt, very very corrupt part of the Busasa deal. Terrible man, and I can just tell you this: he's a scumbag. So uh, let's go some light news now. Um. There's, a, there's an outbreak of swine flu outside of uh, Heilbrunn in the Free State. So while you're in that area, just be careful. Um, don't eat any pigs. You might get flu. In the Howick area right now, they're attacking. Uh, there's roadworks there. They're going up to trucks. They're cutting the brake lines. Trucks are stalling. The locals are stealing all the trucks, material, and, and goods. Uh, people just avoid that area. Uh, it's pretty bad. The pops are on the area, uh, and they're trying to stop it. And apparently, they had it under, under control. But there's areas where these people are literally making roadblocks and cutting these lines, throwing bricks through windows. This is the new crime: steal. And the police are literally standing there and letting them do it. This just proves my point that the police are absolutely, the police in South Africa are absolutely corrupt, useless, and no damn good. Uh, let's start on these farm matters. Now in Benoni, Beno, uh, yeah, in, uh, I think it's Benoni or Venezuela, um, where the uh, general was murdered in his yard and his wife was stabbed and boiled with water. They caught a 19-year-old with a 22 rifle, and since then, they've arrested 10 people. So it looks like it was an inside job, and I have a video at the end of this section that was, uh, on a lady that does lie detector tests and does investigations uh, on a polygraph test and does uh, after-incident reports, and, and she will explain what and how to prevent these things and what the evidence states 100 percent emphatically so in the last month 31 farm attacks that's one a day on an average two murders and three a burden and this is statistics coming from the roman research institute of south africa these are facts these are not government crap Okay, just in the last few days, a 70-year-old woman raped seven times, beaten and left to dead. A pastor's toddler was shot in the face, sent to a rush to get help. His wife fighting for her life. It's disgusting. 40 year old woman fighting for her life. She fought off these rapists. Six caught, one ran away, one got away. And they gave him bail. 
Unbelievable. Man found in his car, burnt to death. Zuma's son. Postponed again. Postponed again. Postponed again. And the BLF supports this little murderer. Him and his father need to go to jail, along with the rest of the corrupt nonsense that's in South Africa. The inauguration of this president, he's invited all these dignitaries to come to this thing. I'm calling on the international community to boycott, show him, boycott. Do not go. Show support for the South African people, black and white, that this government is illegal, corrupt. Now, having said that, this lady, this video I'm going to put up now, this lady explains what happens during, the, during these attacks, why they happen. 90% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's an internal uh, person that's giving them the information. Adding to her stuff, like I said, paint your, paint your windows. Do not go outside for any reason. If you don't trust anything, do not go outside. Even if your bonds are burning down, call for help first. Trust nothing. I would get other people on your farms as well. Go find people in the squatter camps who need a job, who are willing to work, or people that are unemployed, who are desperate for a job. Teach them a skill to be a farmer. Here's the video. Enjoy. My name is Solka Kaiser and I conduct polygraph testing. The reason I'm doing this video tonight is to talk about farm attacks. I've had the great honor of working on farm attacks polygraphing when a farm attack has been planned or in the unfortunate event when it has taken place already. I work with a gentleman called Lucas Swart and he has a system whereby he gains information when an attack is planned through impimpies, which is another word for informants. When a farm attack is planned, from the minute it is planned, there is a person that watches that farm. We call that person the watcher in the woods. The people that commit the actual attack, they call themselves the head squad. And the employees who are planning or who do plan the attack with the head squad are known as the contact people. All farm attacks are inside jobs without fail. Not all employees are involved. It is very rare for that to happen. However, at, on every single farm attack, at least one employee will be involved and often, unfortunately, it has been the person that is closest to the farmer. The way that a farmer can keep himself and his family safe are as follows. Firstly, dogs should be kept inside. This is a must. If your dogs act strangely, growling, going from window to window, you probably have a strange animal outside or you have the head squad that are sitting outside watching you. Also, check your windows. A lot of farm attacks that I've attended to, the point of entry has been a bathroom window or a kitchen window, but in particular, a bathroom window. Before you go to bed at night, make sure that all your windows are closed. Do have security. Also, let's say you have somebody working in your house, a lady, for example. About a year ago, I attended to a farm attack where it was planned, and luckily, we were able to stop that farm attack. That lady started closing the curtains at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. In other words, she was alerting the farmer, you are being watched at this time. They are looking through your windows. If the farm attack is going ahead, let's say now the head squad have decided this is the date and the time, all farm attacks are meticulously planned, more about that just now. If that farm attack is going ahead, this is normally what happens. The head squad will either set off your robo guard 
or they will knock on a window or they will set something alight on your farm, the seeds or the hay or your store. Under no circumstances should a farmer go out if that occurs because that means there's a farm attack that's going to happen. Get onto the radio and call your farm watch and let those people come and assist you. The hit squad, those people are cowards. Their safety and security is paramount. So if they know that you are aware of them, they will run. Also, when we go there and we, when I start polygraphing, it means I'm scratching in their plan. It normally stops the attack. As I said, all farm attacks are meticulously planned. The murder, the rape, the robbery is planned already. It's pre-planned. It has been decided between the contact people, the employees, and the head squad, which are the people who come and commit the actual crime. However, if one person in the head squad changes their mind about the rape, the murder, or the torture, they will all change their mind. This is because an absolute unshakable belief in witchcraft in South Africa with the South African farm workers. Often as well, they will include Zimbabweans because in their mind, the Zimbabweans are better educated. So often you will find that the head squad consists of South Africans and of Zimbabweans. And another thing that you need to watch out for, farmers please, are the workers that are befriending your dogs. The worker that encourages your dog to jump up on his chest and he makes eye contact with that dog. In most cases, he's planning something. I've written a book about this and I interviewed farm attackers and as I said I've attended to about 300 farm attacks where it was either planned or in the unfortunate event where it's occurred. I do know what I'm talking about and I hope that this keeps some of you safe. God bless you all. Good night. Before I conclude this video today and this update, Tammy Crowland was on her bicycle and was hit by a truck. She went to hospital. She's a little banged up. She's doing well. Um, she'll be home soon. Um, much more I do not know, but she seems to be fine. She's texting me back and forth, so she should be good. Um, uh, thank you if you can just put in your prayers. Uh, she seems to be in good spirits, and that's a good sign. Um, there's a document, and I will put it up on my next video which states that the ANC, the Nationalist Government, and the Freedom Front made a pact in 1994 for the independence of the Afrikaans nation. Now I'm looking for that document, the entire document, not the signed section of it, but the entire document I want at all. If anybody has it, please send it to me. I keep seeing the signed document, but I don't see the guts of the, of the document. I want that document. I need the entire document. If anybody has it, please send it to me. Thank you. I'm out of here. Good night. Be safe. Until next time, take care.